Hey, I'm Jem, and this is all the wonderful books I was treated to this Christmas. We have a snack to get through friends and a very short time frame to do it in because I was supposed to film this yesterday and post it today. It hasn't happened. We're going to try and post it tomorrow. But time just keeps getting away from me. And in 40 minutes, I have to leave to go and have my jabs done. And if I don't do it now, I know I'm not going to get it done. So it's going to kind of be like a whistle stop tour of all of the things I got. <laughs> Which, you know me, I tend to not know too much about the synopsis of books anyway. So... I'll just briefly tell you what I can about them and who I got them from and just share all the love that I have received this year. I literally can't believe how many books I got and so many of them were from people that I've met through Instagram or YouTube and just like bookish friends and I'm literally so touched. So without further ado, let's dive in. So. First up, from my lovely son Jensen, we have Needful Things by Stephen King. This is one from my Stephen King 2022 challenge. And from what I understand, um, this is about a guy who runs like a shop where, is it like a magical shop? And like you will find the thing that you need there. I don't know. Um, I remember thinking it sounded really, really cool. It is a chonker. Listen, slight spoiler alert, there's some more Stephen King in here. And I thought when I did my my picks for the challenge that I had picked like some big ones and some small ones, but um, quite a lot of them are like this. So, whoops. <laughs> very, very excited to get to this one though. Then from my partner Danny, I got Gerald's Game by Stephen King, another from the challenge. And this one sounds really cool because I think this is the one where this couple, they go off to like a remote cabin and the woman gets uh, handcuffed to the bed, you know, it's that kind of thing. And uh, then the guy has a heart attack and dies and she's kind of like tied to the bed. And I'm guessing this is kind of before mobile phones and things. So I think it's her trying to escape and it just sounds so good. <laughs> also from Danny, I have The Project by Courtney Summers. I hummed and hard about this one because I heard some like not good things. Um, but I know it's about a cult and I'm just, I'm really intrigued by it and I kind of want to give it a go myself. I absolutely loved uh, Sadie Thomas's, Sadie Thomas? No, Courtney Summers. <laughs> I absolutely love Courtney Summers' first book, Sadie, and I know that it gets compared a lot and it doesn't live up to Sadie, but I'm going to try and just treat it as its own thing. From what I remember, this is about a woman who is looking for her sister who has ended up in a cult. I'm, I don't know. I love the cover. I really love that cover. I'm really looking forward to giving this one a go. Then Danny, bless his heart, he doesn't really know about manga and he saw these on my list and he just bought the top two on the list. Unfortunately, I had added them to the list in reverse order. So he got me volume four and volume three of Livingston. We have since realised, um, which I didn't realise on Christmas Day, that this is the, the Spanish edition, which I'm actually really sad about because um, we're going to return it and I've ordered it from somewhere else, although it's out of stock everywhere. So I've ordered it from Smith's. Whether I'll get it, I don't know, but we'll give it a go. But I really love this cover because it has like a little dust jacket. And I'm just kind of really sad that I have to give it away, but I mean, <laughs> I can't read it. I can't read Spanish. Um, but I have volume four in English and this is the same um, artist that does Smoking Parade and uh, Dead Man Wonderland, who is one of my favorites. I absolutely love their art. But this is about uh, this company called Livingston where these guys work and their job is to find souls that are going to stray and become tainted and Either eliminate them or put them back on the right path. It sounds really really good. I You know, this is unfortunate, but I did get a 15 pound uh, Amazon voucher from Danny's brother. So I ordered <laughs> volumes 1 and 2 so I can read volumes 1 and 2 3 is on its way. I might read it online if I really love it and I've got four so it's just a shame that that three, you know, I mean, I couldn't keep it anyway because it's different size and all of that, but it's a shame because it's really cool. But we'll, we'll send that one back and uh, replace it. But I'm really excited for this series. Um, 
I think I got pulled in by the art because I knew it was an artist that I really like and it does sound like my sort of thing so I know I really shouldn't be starting any more manga series before I finish the ones I've got um but shit happens <laughs> it sounds so perfect for me so thank you Danny and Lee his brother. Next up, my sister got me The Comfort Book by Matt Haig. Now, uh, I have not read any of Matt Haig. Oh, it's so pretty. I have not read any of Matt Haig's uh, fictional work, but his non-fictional work, I love. So I have um, Reasons to Stay Alive and Notes on a Nervous Planet. Both of them have been five stars. One of them is tabbed to hell, the other one will be tabbed on reread. Um, I just absolutely love kind of the way he gives little bits of advice, little bits of, um, you know, anecdotes of living with the conditions that he has, depression, anxiety, things like that. And uh, so when he brought out a new one, I knew I had to get it. I put it on my list and my lovely sister has bought it for me. It says the comfort book is a collection of constellations learned in hard times and suggestions for making the bad days better. That's all I really need. These are the books that I reach to when I'm having just like the roughest time and even if I don't read the whole thing just kind of flicking to a page and reading just a little something can really help so if you haven't read any of his uh, non-fiction books about kind of mental health I can't recommend them enough. My lovely cousin Wendy got me Chasing the Bogeyman by Richard Chismer. This, I'm sorry I think that's how you say it, this I saw because it was nominated for a Goodreads Choice Award I think. And it sounds really, really cool. Do you remember what it's about? Of course not. Oh, hang on. So is that really his name? Let me read you this. In the summer of 1988, the mutilated bodies of several missing girls are discovered in a small Maryland town. The grisly evidence leads police to the terrifying assumption that a serial killer is on the loose in the quiet suburb. But soon a rumour begins to spread that the evil stalking local teens is not entirely human. Law enforcement, as well as members of the FBI, are certain that the killer is a madman and he's playing games with them. Recent college graduate Richard Chismer <laughs> returns to his hometown just as a curfew is enacted and a neighbourhood watch is formed. Inspired by the terrifying events, Richard writes a personal account of the serial killer's reign of terror, unaware that these events will continue to haunt him for years to come. A unique work of metafiction. Now I remember why I was so excited to get it. That sounds amazing. Like, I don't know if this is a pen name, whether he's inserting himself in the story, whether it's based on a real story, I don't know. It sounds so good. I'm so excited. <laughs> Can you tell? I'm literally so excited for this one. This was like so high on my list and when I opened it, I was like, yes, oh, I'm so excited. Wendy also very naughtily got me a 30 pound Waterstones voucher. I had words because that was a lot. <laughs> I popped to Waterstones the day after Boxing Day and took advantage of the 50% off hardbacks in store. So I got uh, Christine Henry's Horseman, which is a retelling of, uh, was it the Headless Horseman, like the Sleepy Hollow type thing, Sleepy Hollow, um, Sleepy Hollow, Headless Horseman. I have collected so much of Christina Henry's work now and I've still only read one but I've just decided that she's an author I'm gonna love and I think this is like not the next one of hers I'm gonna get to but maybe the one after <laughs> because I love Sleepy Holly the film but the original story I hated. I went back and read the original classic story and it was boring. The film is amazing and what I want is a story a bit more like the film and I don't think this is going to be exactly like the film because it's not that setting um, but it has potential because it is um, basically set where in Sleepy Hollow and there is this legend and everyone thinks oh it's not true like the young kids are like oh you know it's not true the, the parents are the adults are like messing with us um, and then maybe it starts to happen again and just maybe a bit more real than they thought and I just think it sounds so cool and I love this cover so much. Then also with this £30 I managed to get the last copy of this and I was so excited because I didn't get it for Christmas because it turns out it was out of stock in Amazon so it wasn't on my wish list anymore. I mean it was but it was shown as out of stock. Um, it wasn't in stock online at Waterstones but it said that my local store might have one and it had one 
it took me a while to find it and I found it and it was half price and I'm so excited. It's Summer of the Wild Bill by Becky Chambers. You guys know this was one I really, really wanted this Christmas because I absolutely love the Wayfarer series and this just sounds so good. Uh, it's about robots and monks and I don't even need to know. It's super short so it should be like a really quick read. I just love her writing and I can't wait to see what she's done after Wayfarers. Next up, and I just realised this is kind of a spoiler for something else to come. So let me come back to this one because... So my friend Jess got me these little book stack earrings, which I don't really know if you can see but they're cute as hell. She got me um, <laughs> The Tommy Knockers by Stephen King. And this is, you know earlier I said, oh I thought I'd put some like shorter ones on, but then they started arriving. I thought the Tommy Knockers was maybe like, I don't know why I thought this, but in my head it was like two to three hundred pages, like it was a short work. Um, no. No. I don't know why I thought that. It is. That's not true, is it? <laughs> That's not true. Hang on. No way is it that long. It's 979 pages. Why did I think this was like 300 pages max? <laughs> so this is about a guy who goes back home um, and it's not like a good return home. He's struggling and he returns home and in the woods he finds something buried. Look, I don't know. I don't know. Why is this on my list? Uh, because it's about Tommy Knockers which is uh, kind of like, I want to say like an Irish ghost story. Um, that might be bullshit. But it's something that I heard about once, I think it was on Ghost Adventures, I'm not going to lie. They were talking about Tommy Knockers. I thought they were sounded absolutely fascinating. And then Stephen King had a book about Tommy Knockers and I was like, yeah, sounds great. I don't even need to know. I genuinely can't believe it's nearly a thousand pages. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm literally, I purposely didn't pick it because I was like, no, that book's really long. <laughs> I just, I should look into things, but I don't care because I'm so excited to read this. I just wish that I'd picked a few more short ones to go with the massive chonkers. And then she also got me Soda Leveling Volume 1 and I used my voucher to get Volume 2. So this is, I want to say this is a South Korean. Hang on, let me look this up. Yes, it's South Korean. So, this is kind of like, um, it was like a webcomic, uh, and it's about this guy. Let me just read you the back. Known as the weakest hunter of all mankind, E-rank hunter Jin Woo Sung's contribution to raids amounts to trying not to get killed. Unfortunately, between his mother's hospital bills, his sister's tuition, and his own lack of job prospects, he has no choice but to continue to put his life on the line. So when an opportunity arises for a bigger payout, he takes it, only to come face to face with a being whose powers outrank anything he's ever seen. With the party leader missing an arm and the only healer a quivering mess, can Jin Woo somehow find them a way out? It just sounds really cool. My friend Emma really likes this series and it just made me excited to kind of give it a go. So I've got volume two. Let's do this. Speaking of my lovely friend Emma, she bought me the gorgeous All For The Game dust jackets. I will insert an image here. They are absolutely stunning. I was very nervous putting them on, but they're on. They look absolutely gorgeous on my shelves and I can't, ugh, I can't thank her enough because I wanted them so bad and I just kept missing out or it ca they came when I couldn't afford it with the shipping and I was very emotional when I opened them. <laughs> because let's face it, the original All For The Game covers are bleh. These ones, gorgeous. She also got me Given, volume two. She let me borrow her volume of Given, volume one. So I read that whilst I was at her house and now I have all the rest. <laughs> so I can binge read this at some point. I am so excited because I've wanted to read Given for so long. This is a BL manga, but it is so sweet. The first volume was so sweet. And it's about these guys who are like in a band and they're just adorable from the first volume. I love them all so much already so I'm so excited to kind of read the rest and then next time I go to her hopefully I've read them and we can kind of watch the movies and the, I think there's like a TV series so I can watch them with her which I will love to do. She also got me volume one of Gangster which is, uh, I don't know, it just sounded really cool. This is set in the city of Aragatsalem. 
<laughs> Filled with madmen and petty thieves, whores on the make and cops on the take, there are some deeds too dirty for even its jaded inhabitants to touch. Enter the handymen, Nick and Warwick, who take care of the jobs no one else will handle. Until the day when a cop they know on the force requests their help in taking down a new gang muscling on the territory of a top mafia family. It seems like business and mayhem as usual, but the handymen are about to find that this job is a lot more than they bargained for. It's mafia manga. I'm excited for this one. <laughs> this has been on my list for a really, really long time. And I don't know uh, what pulled me in. I think just because the the guys look really gritty. Um, I'm just excited for this. You know me. Bring on the mayhem. Bring on the madness. Remember when I was showing you Horseman and I said that I really want to get to it, but it's probably not going to be my next Christina Henry. That would be because my lovely friend B brought me Near the Bone, which... I'm super excited to read. This is about this couple that live on a mountain and she, you know, the woman, is it Matty? Matty. She can't remember a time before her and William lived on this mountain and William is, um, he sounds like a real dick. So I believe it's like an abusive relationship and you know, she tries not to make him angry. And then she realizes they're not as alone as she thought because she finds this mutilated fox body and these three strangers turn up looking for the creature that's in the woods and she knows that's going to anger William and terrible things happen when he's angry and secluded setting unknown creature creepy shit sounds like my perfect book my friend Rachel sent me the first three books from the vampire chronicles so we have interview with the vampire Queen of the Damned and the Vampire Lestat. This is good because as you may or may not know, I am hosting a read along of this series starting with Interview with the Vampire in January. Um, this is kind of like Anne Rice's big work and it follows these uh, vampires through the ages. Um, this one is about Louis and oh, I don't know, I had to describe it. It's him telling his life story to like, like a reporter, I think, I don't know. But I'm really excited to be part of this read along and I'm really excited to get started with this. And thanks to Rachel, I am now set to go. Rachel also treated me <laughs> to Paperbacks from Hell by Grady Hendrix. And I am very excited to have this in my collection because I feel like this is not something I will sit down and read. It's something I will dip in and out of, but you know I love Grady Hendrix and I've always wanted this on my shelf. I did not realize how big it was uh but i'm excited so this is basically just him talking about like these old horror paperbacks and i am quite excited to kind of look through it and see if there's uh some ones that i haven't heard of that i would really like to give a go um maybe i will give it a go there's some james herbert in here and we know i'm really enjoying james herbert at the minute so this is the twisted history of 70s and 80s horror fiction so maybe I will flick through this actually. Now, now I've had a flick through, I'm like, mm, actually, it's quite interesting because it's broken up by kind of types. I have a breakdown at the front. Hail Satan, creepy kids, when animals attack, real estate nightmares, weird science, gothic and romantic, inhumanoids, splatterpunk serial killers and super creeps. So actually, if I was looking for something quite specific, if I was like thinking, do you know what, I'm in the mood for that, I would have a flick through this and see if there's some old books that I've missed because we know that I have missed many, many horror books. So this is actually really exciting. <laughs> I'm just loving to have this on my shelf. This is from my wonderful friend Fliss and she sent me this and said that we need to do a Stephen King buddy read in 2022. And yes, I'm all for that. This is Christine and I adore this cover so much. <laughs> I'm so glad that I got this edition. This is about like a killer car. Is that right? From the back, it's either about a killer car or someone in love with their car or someone in love with a killer car. I don't know, but I'm excited to find out. My friend Leia sent me these and as soon as I opened it, I knew they were from her, even though the gift notes didn't print because Nick and Charlie by Alice Oseman, if anyone was going to get into me, it was going to be Leia. Because Leia got me, um, which one was my other one? I was born for this. And we kind of really both love Heartstopper and things like that. So as soon as I saw this and there was no doubt, I messaged her and I was like, is this from you? <laughs> she was like, yes. So I'm really excited. I need some more Alice Oseman books. I'm trying to like collect them so that I have some to dip in and out of. But this one is probably going to get read next, to be honest, because... I just love Heartstopper so much. I don't know, is this like a prequel? No? Is it after? 
I don't know. I don't need to know. I'll figure it out and then I'll know when to read it. She also got me The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. Uh, this sounds amazing. It is like sci-fi horror. So this woman lies her way onto an expedition like a, and she thinks it'll be fine because there'll be like a whole group of people taking care of her. But it's just her and this one woman. And this woman has like literally no qualms about using her like controlling her body with drugs manipulating her and this whole expedition there's like missing equipment and it's just really not not what she thought it was going to be and then i don't know oh the last line says but why can't she shake the feeling that she's being followed and i've heard nothing but good things about this and i can't wait to pick it up the lovely Ashley from Ashley's Media Addiction sent me Dreamcatcher by Stephen King. Um, I'm so excited for this one because I remember really loving the film and I, I always think that's dangerous with Stephen King because half the time he doesn't even like the movie ad adaptations. Like they're not, they're not normally that good. However, it does sound really, really cool. So I actually don't know how to describe this. It's about like a group of kids and I want to say that they protect this kid and... He has, I don't know, they protect this kid and then they go their separate ways, but they get together once a year to go hunting and then one year this man comes running into their camp and talks about light in the skies and somehow those things are linked. I think I know more than that because of the film. It's been so long since I watched the film, I'm not sure and also I don't know if that would be spoiler territory. So we're just going to leave it as that. It sounds good. I'm just not describing it very well, but I, it's good. I'm sure it's good. It's totally gonna be good. <laughs> then my girl Silka from the Danish Readaholic gifted me The Casket Girls by Alice Arden. This is the first book in the series. I have read the first three but only via like audiobook and ebook and I've always wanted the books because I really love the covers. Um, I haven't finished it because they stopped releasing them as audiobooks which made me really sad because the audiobooks were so good. Like the narrators were amazing so I thought well I'll probably go back to the start reread it and then continue and now I have book one so I can finally do that so this is about a young girl who moves to New Orleans after there's been I think it was like a hurricane and the levee broke and it got flooded and it's you know I don't think she moves home I think she goes home after this has all been happening and they're trying to like rebuild it and there's witches and vampires and it's, it's a whole thing like I don't know how to describe it but it's fantastic I think it's based on like a true story because the name of one of the characters and some of the storyline is very similar to the beautiful by um what is that who is, writes that book I can't remember but you know which one I mean the beautiful and actually that put me off reading the beautiful for a long time because I was already read this and was like mm. but I think it's just like a real person and she kind of came over to America with like a load of they used to send them with like caskets of stuff but there was like this rumor that in the caskets were vampires it might be true it might be true so yeah I really want to kind of go back and revisit the first three books remind me of the story and then continue it so so excited for this she also got me 13 stories by Jonathan Sims. This is about a dinner party in a penthouse where nobody knows each other. The host has invited all these strangers. By the end of the night, the host is dead. And I think everyone has like a different story. It says, by the end of the night, their host is dead and none of the guests will say what happened. His death has remained one of the biggest unsolved mysteries until now. Sounds so good. So good. The host is like a billionaire. Who killed him? Did anyone kill him? What happened? I got to know. Then, Lottie, my lovely Lottie, sent me Every Heart Doorway by Shauna Maguire. I have been wanting to collect this series for so long. This is another one that I've been doing via Kindle and ebook. But I really want the, the actual hardbacks. They're so lovely. And I know they're so short, but they're just, they're so cool. And I need to collect them all. And now she's started my collection off for me. This is, you probably know this, um, a portal fantasy where kids that have gone off to like adventures in different worlds, they come back and they don't really know how to adjust. So they go to Eleanor West's home for Wayward Children and they kind of go there and they're kind of waiting for their doors to reopen and each one follows like a different um kid or a different like world and just i love this series so much and i think i'm a couple behind now so i would like to kind of collect them and then start doing them via physical book rather than 
a Kindle and audiobook because then, as we know, I tend to forget. So I am part of the Discord for Rose Channel Wandering Through Worlds and we did like a little Secret Santa gift exchange and I received these from the lovely Marlous. Um, I really hope I pronounced that right, sorry if I haven't. I got volume one of Black Torch. This is about a guy who is descended from Long Line Ninjas and can talk to animals and that's all I really need to know. Oh, um, it says that a, a stray cat kind of fuses with him and draws him into uh, a battle against demons. It just sounds so cool. I just, it sounds really, really good. I'm so excited to start this one. And she also got me Popkin and Stubbs number three, which is called Ghost Catcher. This is a middle grade series about this um, Lil Popkin who wants to be a journalist and she starts investigating stuff in her town and her friend Nedley Stubbs um, is a ghost. Um, the first book was so, so good. I now have two and three, so I can't wait to continue this series. It's like a cute little creepy ghost middle grade that is everything i'm not going to pick them all up i'm going to have to do that for the thumbnail in a sec but my gosh i think i've just squeezed that in before i need to leave for my jab i have i have to go now so i need to keep this short let me know in the comments something that you received for christmas i just want to thank everyone that got me something i am so 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 grateful um thank you guys so much for watching and if you're not already subscribed and you'd like to see more bookish content from me please remember to hit that subscribe button and i will see you in the next one bye